But it was three simple things that I was like, holy shit. Had I known this, as you said, I would have accelerated my learning curve. I would have probably launched three successful products instead of failed products. Now, and then the other thing is, like, as you said, is you not only do you lose money or lose your sanity or whatever, but you can lose momentum. And I've seen a lot of people that, like, I don't know if you've seen that, um, if you've seen that, what's it called, that, like, uh, illustration or that, like, cartoon where there's, like, two guys, one of them is, like, right by the, like, they're both digging, one of them is, like, right by the gym, and then he turns around and come back where the other one, like, keeps going. And literally, you could write, be like right there about the to destroy gold and it's just that like one pivotal moment that you just lost momentum and, and moved away and that could be the the thing stopping you from like exponentially growing you know totally <clears throat> and usually those little <clears throat> excuse me those little moments are the mentor's time to shine yes. because they will give you that nugget they'll be like oh dude i remember when i was right there this is the move i made it didn't work try that or this move worked and that that didn't work. Those little tweaks and adjustments along the path is how you project and and project yourself forward. I also have a real life example. I have tons of examples of this, but one that comes to mind that's fucking kind of funny and a little bit controversial. So strap in for this one is uh, back in the day I I ended up um, operating and managing and running a a cockfighting breeding business. Okay, you know cockfighting, the chickens that fight each other to the death? Yes, but I've never seen it. Why? But yeah, I've heard of it. It's fucking, it's pretty gnarly. So, um, again, yeah, it's that. culture, man. It was in the Philippines, like, maybe seven or eight years ago. So, this is a good example of how a mentor can help you <laughs> succeed. <laughs> because in that culture, cockfighting is like their go-to sport. That and basketball. And they're heavy gamblers, so cockfighting is the thing. And it's just like, it's everywhere. Sundays, it's massive. And so I was there and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to go bet on these cocks that are fighting just because I want to be part of the culture. I got my local friends. Let's fucking go. Put down a couple bucks, have a beer and like see what's happening. So I went there and it's, it's very fucking crazy. If you guys are at home like YouTube, Filipino cockfighting arena, you'll see the chaos. People are throwing money around. Chickens are fighting each other and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, let's get into this. And I'm like throwing money and I'm losing and I'm winning and I'm not really know what I'm doing. And like I was up like four bucks at the end or down four or whatever. I was like, that's cool. I ended up going talking to a gentleman who um, was turned out to be a very dear friend, uh, like a second father almost there. And he had a cock fighting breeding business. And I was like, that's awesome. Tell me about that. Let's, let's talk about this shit. And he's like, okay, well, this is how it works. And he explained to me as a mentor should how it works, the steps, the way, it, like the political side of it, the ins and the outs of the business, the back end of it. And I was like, oh my God, this is super crazy shit. So I was like, well, how do I get in on this? He's like, oh, well, you can, you want to manage it for me? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I do. Let's do that. So we ended up going and he's like, okay, well, firstly, the way that it works is we go to the, the cock arenas and we make the bets with the Cocker mayor. Is. <laughs> yeah. Cock fighting arenas. We make a bet with the, the, the mayor and the pol politicians who were there and they're big bets. Hundreds of thousands of pesos, right? So thousands of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands. And so you make the bets with the politicians and then the politicians own the arena and the money that comes in from the arena from the tickets basically hedges their bet, if that makes sense. And then you show up and you win all the, you win a bunch because you have good, good chickens. And then all the people come and they're like, your chickens are amazing. We want that breed. And then you start selling them IOUs for breeds. And now you're selling chickens because you're winning. So you're taking all the politicians' money because you got the best chickens and then you're selling them all to the locals that you're there and you move from city to city doing that. Yeah. And so I learned this shit and I go to my first fight as the manager. I walk, so picture this. I walk in the only white guy in the whole fucking community by far. It's this little town in the middle of nowhere. I go there, I have a driver, I have a guard who's carrying a machine gun and I have another guy who's the money guy and the money guy is walking with a duffel bag full of cash. And so we walk in through the back, go up to the top. The mayor of the city is there. The politicians are there. They're having like this feast. They're having lechon, which is a pig. They're eating all this beautiful food and shit. And they're like, okay, you know, this is the bets. These are the things that are happening. They start doing the thing. And I kind of like stand back and let them all do their thing. Chickens fight. The whole thing happens. It goes overnight. It's like a 12, 15 hour ordeal. Jesus. It's a shit show. Yeah. 
And then chickens are winning, chickens are losing. I don't know. We, we did okay. We kind of broke even-ish on that one. It was the very first one. And we left. And then on the way out, uh, my, my chicken guy, because there's also a chicken team that's there uh, with like 50 chickens that are fighting and like a team of 10, 10 humans taking care of it. They're selling IOU chicken tickets. Wow. And so we, when we get in the convoy, there's a van and a truck. We get in there and I'm like, what the fuck was that? Right? I'm like 15 beers deep and I'm kind of like, what the hell just happened? And they're like, yeah, sir. So here's the cash. You know, we, we 50% increased on our cash here. We sold 77 tickets for the chickens. And, um, you know, we got the inn for the next city and the mayor's waiting for us. And it's on like the 14th of March or whatever, like 45 days away kind of thing. And we need to bring a team of 10. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so again, to wrap it up, mentor experience was that big money, politicians, the whole thing. Me doing it on my own was me throwing a dollar here and a dollar there and just being in the crowd like a fucking idiot. Very drastic, different experience. Yes. Mentor got you in and showed you what's up and put me on the path to success. If I wanted to build that business, I could still be doing that now. Yeah. But I, I kind of bowed out after the second or third fight because I didn't, it wasn't really for me once I saw the ins and the outs of it. Um, but that's the power of a mentor, man. It can set you up. That's awesome. No. Anyone, anyone wanting to, uh, to start in the, uh, cock, what is it? Cock, what is it? What cock fighting. Cock fighting. Cock fighting. Please reach out to Aaron as Instagram as, uh, Aaron. I should have said it. And just say how to cock fight and, uh, oh, we take care of you. <laughs> oh, oh, God. So is that, is that the next business we're getting into? Is that what's happening right now?